Well, aloha everyone. Dan Hurt with Dan Hurt Prospecting here. Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new, welcome. I hope to earn your subscription today. I'm coming to you today from the big island of Hawaii. Yes, we are gem hunting in Hawaii. You may know Hawaii for its beautiful white sand beaches. You may also know it for its black sand beaches. They are amazing. However, did you know that Hawaii has a gemstone beach? Yes, a beach made entirely of green gemstones. The Peridot Beach of the southern point of the Big Island of Hawaii is our destination for today. Our adventure is taking us down to see what kind of gems we can find on the green gemstone beach of Hawaii. So wish us luck and I hope you enjoy. Now you can walk down to the beach. It's about three miles in, takes about an hour, um, hour there, hour back. Or you can take one of the shuttles. You know, they're just trucks that go up and down the hill, run by the locals. It's $20 per person, and it takes about 20 minutes in, 20 minutes back. And it's a lot easier, for sure. A little bit later, I'll take the next one. Well, I made it into the green sand beach here. It was quite the epic uh, shuttle trip down. That is a very, very rough road, but we're here at the beach. Let's go down and check things out. So I am here on the southern tip of the big island of Hawaii on what's known as the Green Sand Beach. This beach is made up basically 100% of peridot crystals. That's the gemstone peridot. And the whole beach is made up of billions and billions and billions of individual grains of olivine, also known as peridot. And as you can see, it's a very large tourist destination here on the Big Island. All because of that. And of course, I'll be showing you some nice close-ups of what's in my hand. So the gemstone in question today, the gemstone that makes up this beach is known as Peridot. You'll have seen on my channel many videos about Peridot coming out of the hard rock before, but here it is an entire beach made of peridot. Now peridot is the gem or the crystal form or gem form of a mineral called olivine. Olivine is very well uh, distributed in volcanic basalts but I'll explain to you in a moment why this beach has so much of it. Now apparently there are two or three other green gemstone beaches in the world made of peridot like this. I don't know exactly where they are, but uh, talking with some of the locals, they say this is not completely unique that in the entire world that there are four, I think they said, beaches that are just absolutely green because they're made from peridot. Now I know everyone is asking right now, why would there be a beach? so concentrated in such a specific mineral, which happens to be, you know, a gem quality stone. Well, that's all to do with those bluffs right there. Now those bluffs right there are volcanic ash from Mount Mauna Loa on the big island of Hawaii. The volcanic ash is loaded, and I mean loaded in peridot. And as the ocean waves come in and erode this bluff of volcanic ash, it deposits all of the ash, everything, onto the beach. Then this wave action back and forth starts to strip away the lighter material. The ash and the basalt are both much lighter than the peridot. So as the waves come in and out and in and out, it pushes the hard material up, which settles, and the light material doesn't settle, it gets pulled back and washed away to sea. 
And that's how wave action will concentrate heavy materials like gemstones in one spot. And because there's such a huge concentration coming out of that bluff, depositing it right here, we have a huge, huge, almost 100% concentration of peridot sitting on this beach. I use the word peridot and olivine interchangeably because really these are too small to be considered peridot. They would be considered olivine crystals. You don't really call it peridot until it's big enough that you can facet it and make a gemstone out of. But, you know, I like gemstones, so we're calling it peridot today. I've managed to find a nice place underneath one of these volcanic ash bluffs to sit in somewhat shade. My feet are in the sun, but my head's in the shade. I'm a redhead, I can't take this sun very much, and I will get burned in no time out there, though I have lots of sunscreen on. And looking at these volcanic ash bluffs, you can see it's a mixture of bigger uh, pieces of basalt, you know, fine ash, some little nodules. I think those are actually um, peridot nodules. They're just dirty right now. It's all light, light material. And that's because of the way the volcano erupted and deposited this huge ash bed here. And it is a huge ash bed, but a very high percentage of olivine or peridot. And if you're a little bit more interested in the geology that creates that bluff or creates this peridot here, I do plan to do a separate video completely on the geology and the volcanics that, you know, created such a unique situation. So check back for another entire video on that. I don't want to bore people that aren't interested in, you know, the nitty gritty technicals in this video. I just want them to see this beautiful beach. And I did bring my gem sieve today to do some dry sieving and some wet sieving and see what size of crystals we can actually find. What I've been told is that absolutely everything on this beach is very small, but we might be able to find something a little larger. That would be fun. I knew that was gonna happen. Everyone wanted to see what I was doing when I pulled out the gem sieve. I'm gonna use some more and see if I can get a good volume of the material before I you know, flip it over and take some pictures of it. Because there is some bigger crystals here, big enough that the gem sieve is catching, but not all that many. So I'll do it over and over and over again and see if I can get enough to make a flip and see if I can get green cake. cooperating very much with me. Eventually I'll lose my camera. We're getting some. There we go. <laughs> Perfect, we're getting some. Some bigger crystals here. 
It'd take a long time before I filled up the sieve with big crystals though. Well, they're not big crystals by any stretch, but they are bigger, big enough they don't go through the sieve. So after, you know, 10 or 15 sieve fulls, I do seem to have about a cup of the bigger stuff in here. So I might take those, just put them aside for now and see what else I can do. Well, gotta take pictures of them first, of course. what a bit of dry sieving can do for us. There we go. And if you concentrate all to one corner and shake it a bit, the basalt all comes to the surface, really showing the difference in density, that the basalt is light, the peridot is heavy, and sinks to the bottom. Here's a nice close-up of what the peridot actually looks like. The black rocks are basalt, the white rocks are coral, uh, or, or shell, and the green rocks are the peridot crystals. Now, even though this beach is about 99% peridot, you'll notice in my sieve a lot of black basalt rocks. And that's because the basalt is typically bigger than the peridot. The peridot is mostly really small. So the sieve is actually concentrating peridot as well as concentrating the basalt. Bigger pieces of peridot, I should say, as well as the basalt. Dry sieving seems to be working very, very well to concentrate the larger crystals of peridot out of this beach. And there is a beautiful crystal. You'll notice these crystals are all rounded. That's because they are water run. The ocean rounds them. But that is a beautiful one sitting with that basalt. So there are some bigger. That's about an eighth inch across. You can really see the concentration action the waves have, where at the top it's just like 100% green, 100% olivine peridot. Down here you're seeing a lot more darker stones, the basalt, and you get down to where the waves are really working it, and this stuff is like 90% basalt. Okay, maybe not. 50% basalt, 50% peridot. It really brings down the basalt and leaves the peridot up at the top. Had to reapply the sunscreen. Whew. Well, I think it's time for me to go enjoy that water. Luckily, this is an underwater camera. I can take it with me. So I definitely decided that dry sifting works a lot better than wet sifting. Wet sifting, even using the water, was complicated, took a long time, and didn't get me the greatest results. But sifting this dry sand 
went really quickly to get nice big well, the big crystals, the bigger crystals that you find here. And dry was the way to go for sure. And over closer to the main bluffs here, there's a whole lot more of the bigger crystals. This was just one sifting, one sifting worth? One sifting worth, sure, why not? Of the crystals from, well, the, the sand from right there. And you know, that is a whole lot more. Very similar to the red garnets I get off Garnet Beach, except these are green, peridot. And I'm not bothering to flip these uh, gem sieve centers or anything like that because it's we're like 95, 98, 99% peridot here. There's no point in flipping it because you have just as much on the top as you have on the bottom. So uh, just, you know, sifting it out and collecting it all. And as I said earlier, uh, the peridot is all being washed out of this volcanic ash here. One great big eruption brought the peridot from the deep in the crust, brought it to the surface, it went way up into the sky, it all sort of filtered down, landed right here, and the water is now eroding away the ash, dropping the, the peridot. However, all that being said, there are still lots of rocks on Hawaii Island, the big island of Hawaii here, probably on all the Hawaiian islands, that have peridot mixed through the volcanics. The basalt coming up from below also has peridot crystals in it. In this case, it's coming from the Bluff of Ash, but there is also all over the island, on every beach you find, rock with peridot in it. Let's get close up for that. Now this is typical of the Hawaiian basalts with olivine or peridot in it. It's small tiny pockets, not necessarily air bubbles, but you know, small tiny chunks of peridot that came up with the basalt and then got sort of uh, washed in the ocean, whatnot, made into these round balls and exposed the peridot on the surface. Olivine, I should say. Unlike the big nests I get back home, these are just small. And I'm having such an awesome time here on this green beach in Hawaii that I better get my video done of the geology before I just say, ha, forget it. I'm just enjoying the sun. So let's go do that. I will sign off this in a bit, but that video of the geology of this will be a separate video. So check back on my channel for that separate video. You can definitely see where that very green peridot is weathering out from above, sliding down before it even gets to the beach. Now I wanted to make sure I did one big comprehensive video of the whole of the green beach other than that geology which is in its own. I don't know what else I need to show you other than, you know, the beautiful green beach, what it's made of, how to get here, recommend to people that they gotta try it. If they're on the big island you have to come here, it is amazing. Show off the scenery, show off all the people having the time of their lives. It is an awesome place. If there is something else you would have liked me to talk about or see here, uh, please leave a comment below. Tell me what I missed. I'm lost for words. Beautiful spot, beautiful water. I am so glad I made this trip to Hawaii. I made the trip to Hawaii specifically to do a video at this beach, and I'm so glad I did. It was so worth it. Now, the primary reason for me coming to Hawaii was to do this video on the Green Sands Beach and share the experience with all of you. But of course, while I'm on the island, there's a lot more Hawaii for me to experience. Well, everyone, I think that is the most amazing beach I can imagine. I can't think of anything better than an entire beach made of gemstones. I sure hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave me that thumbs up. If I haven't earned your subscription already, I really hope this one did it. And a big thanks to everyone for watching, especially my patrons. Because of the support of my patrons, I get to make these weekly episodes of Dan Heard Prospecting from the most amazing spots. Hope you're all having an amazing day.
And until the next one, mahalo and aloha.